Hello, everyone. This is Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister, the Disrupt Meister. Welcome to the One Bitcoin Show. Today is September the 8th, 2019. Strong hand, be a unique beast, value your wealth in Bitcoin, having hype, unconfiscatable, offended by selling in motion. And tonight, today, whatever it is, wherever you are, um, we've got a dude that's in motion. You've heard me talk about this guy before, but he's yet to be on the show because we're never in the same time zone and we still aren't. But Gaston Cruz of Long Beach in the house, he's here to tell us what the heck happened in the LA area at the Bitcoin Is conference. And we'll talk about Long Beach. We'll talk about all sorts of things. But we, I get you guys that are on the ground. And so Russell Okung, he had this conference that we talked about just a few days ago in Los Angeles. First of all, Gaston, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adam. It's a pleasure to be on. And it was also a pleasure to have you at my meetup as well. Yes. So that's how, well, Gaston's watched the show for a long time. Gaston, pronounce it correctly. Pound that like button. He's, he's watched the show for a while and he was very great to let me speak at the, the event in Long Beach. And again, that that is linked to below. He is linked to below. Russell's event is linked to below. Uh, and it's, it's your, your uh, meetup in Long Beach is called the Bit Active, right? I mean, is that the official name of it? I mean, that's the meetup name of it. Yeah, we changed the name over to Bit Active. Yeah, that's it. It's, you're in motion. We're bit, yeah, we're a bit active. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you, let me quote a tweet of yours. After attending Bitcoin Is today, I have come to the conclusion that it's time for us to spread the word outside of our comfort zone. It's time to represent crypto on non -cri at non-crypto conferences and spread the word. We can't continue to speak in this echo chamber. Okay, so what happened there? There were a lot of, how many people were there, first of all? Uh, I'm gonna say 100 people-ish, 100-ish, maybe 130, 100 to 130 people. Okay. Um, one thing that was interesting about the conference is that it was very strict on the entrance to get in, a lot stricter than it's been before uh, compared to other conferences. Um, like you had to show ID and had to match your badge and you had to like go into an elevator that a security is uh, running and there was like a lot of security, a lot more than a regular conference would. Um, so, I mean, I got in, I usually get media passes and I reached out to, uh, Bitcoin is, um, the event organizer and they're pretty much, uh, already gave out all their media passes. So I had to get an actual ticket. Um, so when I, right when I got there, um, Safadine Amos, I believe I'm pronouncing his name right. Uh, who wrote the, uh, the Bitcoin standard was entering with me. So that was really interesting. I uh, met him right away, so that was cool. Um, right when I got to the, the venue, once we go up through the elevator, um, I was there pr fairly early, so I was one of the first 50, first 50 to get there. Um, saw a couple of my friends, which is, which is always good. A lot of people are uh, part of the community. Um, then uh, people started coming in, and um, one thing that I noticed was that um, since it was their first event, they had the music way too loud. So the networking that was part of the title, um, it was a little hard to do with the music very loud. It was, it was definitely like being in a club right at the get go. Um, no, wait, I got, we I got right one in. specific question. Yeah. Security was yeah. tight. Security was tight. Where was this? It was in downtown LA or where exactly was it? It was exactly in downtown LA, one block east of the Staples Center in a building called the Hudson's Loft. And I've been there for another crypto event, uh, but it's a, it's a small location. I mean, maybe they were protecting Russell. I, I don't know. Maybe because they were famous people. I, that is interesting about you, you felt the security was tight. Okay, so the, the, it's like a club. The uh, music is blasting. The networking is uh, kind of difficult. Where, and, but you knew some people there. But what was the crowd? Make? Was it a lot of newbies? Or what type of people were in the house? <laughs> so we got to a point, I think it was like right at the opening uh, talk or uh, the MC for the night. He asked uh, anybody in the crowd uh, that doesn't own any Bitcoin, raise their hand. And it was about six people. 
So everybody was kind of experienced in some way uh, there. However, it kind of felt like that event was more towards uh, beginners. Um, parts of it, not, not the entire thing, but it was definitely more towards parts of it. And that kind of me and my buddy, uh, Mark Moss, were talking about like how many times do we have to, you know, go to conferences and, and listen to some guy talk about Bitcoin being decentralized and it being the future. Like we know this already. Why are we just re recycling the same stuff? Well, because a lot of people that got into crypto and might be holding Bitcoin got into it because of maybe Ripple and they didn't understand. They just bought Bitcoin because they were speculating on it. Who, who knows? It's, uh, I, I, I get your point, definitely. Now, as I thought the conference, I thought there'd be a lot more people that wouldn't have Bitcoin there. I thought Russ, I thought he was trying to appeal, appeal to newbies also. But from what you're saying, there were holders, there were people that, that had Bitcoin there already, which is interesting uh as i i definitely thought and so you i mean you concluded that it's going to have to go beyond the the uh the inner circle here it's going to have to get beyond just the, the little echo chamber so what was the uh, in inspiration for that conclusion yeah i mean exactly like me and my buddy mark Moss was just like sitting on the side listening to i forgot who was speaking but yeah we were just like he was uh i was i told him I was like, dude, how many more times do we have to listen to somebody tell us that Bitcoin is decentralized and we're getting screwed by these central banks and so on and so on. The same stuff that we already know, like how many more times do you have to tell us that? And then he's like, yeah, man, I just came back because he told me that he just came back from a conference in uh, Texas and he just heard half these guys speak. And it was like pretty much the same thing that he heard in Texas. So it's just like getting really repetitive for people who keep attending conferences. And that's, I started getting a, an Omar moment because I know, you know, Omar Crypto's news. And, uh, you know, he told me he doesn't attend too many conferences because he just feels the same way. Um, it's just repetitive stuff or there's just a new altcoin shill in itself. So he really likes Ethereum. So he, the only real conference that he likes to go see is, the Ethereum conference uh, because they're talking about the updates. So, I mean, hats off to them. Now, now let's clarify one thing with this conference, the Bitcoin is thing. There was no altcoin shilling at all. There was, it was Bitcoin is right. They didn't, no one got, uh, there, was, there was no, there was no altcoin shilling that I knew of. Um, everything was around Bitcoin. Uh, Russell uh, was called a Bitcoin maximalist. Uh, he considered himself a Bitcoin maximalist. And um, the only thing that was actually shilled that wasn't Bitcoin was Lightning Network stuff. But I mean, I don't consider that really shilling. What's your take on Russell? What's what's your take on him? How's he, he's super serious about this or uh, what, what was the impression he gave everyone? Yeah, he's definitely uh, serious. He, he definitely knows his stuff. He, he you know, he, he didn't just get into Bitcoin, you know, last week and said, hey, I can make some money and and scam some people so definitely hats off to him um you know hats off to him for uh i, I was watching a twitter video uh, of him and he's in the la chargers locker room and he's like hey guys check this out i'm gonna ask my buddy about bitcoin and he, you know he asked some other football player on his on his team he's like hey man don't you, do you know what bitcoin is and that football player i don't know who it was but he just had a big smile he's like yeah i know what bitcoin is so even though that that guy was kind of annoyed of the bitcoin topic at least he heard of it and it's it's in the right hands you know it's not a you know russell's not out there trying to tell people hey man uh get some bitcoin you're gonna make money um he's out there you know preaching it right you know it's freedom you're getting screwed by these central banks and uh it is the future and it's gonna lead to a lot of prosperity i want to remind everyone uh that russell okong plays for the los angeles chargers so he's so if you don't know there's a lot of international people he's a football he's an american football star and he put on this event because he's been talking about bitcoin for quite some time and he he obviously practiced what he preaches and he's he tells his buddies about it in the uh locker room and i think it is to get a mainstream person like this really into bitcoin it, it's it's big because he's going to get newbies into it and so that's why i was so uh intrigued by this event did you meet any uh anyone that stand stood out uh, that, that you met at the event any any speaker you thought was real good um yeah that was the thing man you know i went there to get some media done um so it was like one big open room 
with two side rooms and one side room was for uh, VIPs and the other was for a couple of vendors that were uh, talking about their product. Um, and then it was just one big open room with the uh, seating and then like an open area where you can talk and network, which uh, it was difficult. Uh, I got to meet a couple people. So here is my actual tag right there just to show that I was actually in the building. Uh, yeah, these are the people who I got to meet. Uh, the man himself that wrote the Bitcoin standard, Safadine Amos. He's a really interesting guy. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have to get to have a conversation. We were, we were shushed on our conversation because our, our conversation echoed during uh, the speaker's talk. So that was, uh, I mean, I got to meet him, but I didn't really get to talk to him. I mean, I told him, thank you for what you do. I also got to meet Jimmy Song uh, again, and he just wrote this book for beginners, which is really interesting. He also went ahead and autographed that for me. And there's like a QR code that validates that he was actually there. So that was really cool. And also I got to meet Zay, Bitcoin Zay from the Gentleman of Crypto. They hold a... Uh, crypto's news like once a day and he wrote this book bitcoin and black america whoa yeah, and uh autograph that one as well so i got to pick up these bad boys but yeah like i said the networking was tough uh you know let's talk about that book for a second bitcoin in black america i actually hadn't heard about that yet and i'm i'm obviously in the uh well russell's a black dude and so what, what was the uh what were the demographics like there was there reach out to the black community i mean you You've got stuff going on in uh, central Los Angeles. There's that um, de selling Bitcoin directly to the people type of thing that I heard about at your event. You're trying to get people that aren't usually associated with Bitcoin into Bitcoin because right. everybody should be in Bitcoin. You know, it, it doesn't discriminate against anyone. Right, right. That's, uh, that's my friend, Naja. Uh, she helped run the uh, crypto blockchain plug in Englewood. And that is a pretty much a center for education and uh, OTC and anything pretty much crypto related. Uh, Max Kaiser actually stopped by and had a, a rant and we went to go ahead and see him speak. So it's a great place to go and get educated. Um, but yeah, she's, she's uh, the demographics at Bitcoin is um, still very similar. I, I still see, you know, it's pretty much still dominant white Caucasians uh males there but uh i mean I'm trying to think i mean the, the demographics really really didn't change so, so down in long beach at your event now this i admire you first of all trying to get into the the big event there in la for free that's what you should try to do so as you save your money to buy more bitcoin and pound that freaking like button but yeah. your event your event in long beach is free and it's got definitely a lots of different type of people there there were some females there, I remember also. That, that's the hardest demographic to, to get to these events. But you had, you had all sorts down at your event. So let's, let's talk about uh, what, what you're trying to do down there in Long Beach. I mean, it's a really down-to-earth event. Everybody gets to say who they are. And you, know, they're, and you hear all sorts of things, too. You, it's not just Bitcoiners that show up at your event. There are people trying to shell stuff. But hey, it, it, it's a good amount of people. And it's a, it's a monthly thing. So tell us, uh, tell us what's going on with that. Yeah, so pretty much I started a monthly crypto meetup in the downtown Long Beach area. Uh, we have it every month. And um, pretty much I started it because, you know, growing up, I played basketball. And if I wanted to go play basketball, I can just go to the park and pick up a game with anybody who's running a game. You can't do that in crypto. In crypto, you have to go on YouTube and just catch whatever is on. Um, maybe you catch somebody live and you can probably chat with them and maybe get an, a question in and that uh, maybe you might get an answer you never know it depends how much questions the uh, speaker is getting at the time in the comments um so at my meetup you know i you know i try to bring a convention to you uh, as best as as best as i can explain it in real basic terms so it's like how do people, you know, what if people want to ask Adam a couple, you know, three or four questions? How do they do that? You know, it's hard to catch you, especially when you're in different time zones. So if you're in the area, you know, and I'm having you attend, you know, you can come and have a full blown conversation with the guy. You know, I've had multiple people attend. Um, we, I've had the Litecoin Foundation there. They talked about Litecoin and, and Lightning Network. I've had um, 
Edge Wallet I had yourself. I've had Omar from Crypto's News. I have uh, as many projects as I can that are local that are willing to come out and talk. And, and I, think, I think these really local meetups are where it's at. They're free and they're, they're different because you're right. Some of these conferences, it's like the same thing over and over again. It's the same you know, all-star lineup and they're talking about the same things and now you've got security concerns. <laughs> yeah. um, but yours is a, I mean, yours is the grassroots type of stuff. And you know, there's some yeah. people, you know, you, it's cool to, you know, read stuff on Twitter, but every once in a while, get out in the real world, meet some real people, be in motion. You might, you might network and uh, you never know. You're, you're doing a good thing. You're bringing it to the people. And uh, I mean, there were definitely all, all sorts of people at yours. There was a, 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 an Asian Hey, was he a student there? I mean, there were, there were black dudes there. There were all sorts of dudes from all, and people had driven, people drive way too much in the LA area, but people had come from, people had come from pretty far to be there. So there, there's just some, yeah, it's, and again, there were some people who were talking about, you know, shield things, stuff. Yeah, that, that's like, that's like the internet too. So, um, you know, what, what that you mentioned, uh, Litecoin real quick. And yeah. I want to, I want to mention a tweet of yours here. Sure. I hope, I know. I love how the Litecoin Foundation attended the Mammoth Film Fest to reach out to newbies and teach them about crypto. So this is very interesting. I did not know the Litecoin Foundation yeah. attended a regular event that had nothing to do with cryptocurrency. Correct. Yeah. The Litecoin Foundation attended the Mammoth Film Festival. They had a booth and they were actually there to talk to attendees about crypto, and I think they got they got a couple actors um, uh, involved. Uh, shout out to John Kim, actually doing a lot of uh, uh, adoption for for Bitcoin and Litecoin out there. Um, he actually um, got a, a UFC fighter to get interested in, in Litecoin. So um, you have a UFC fighter, you know, throwing out the words of, of crypto out there and adoption. So I think we need more of that. I mean, we're just really just you know we're, we can't stop these uh, events but it's time for us to also you know add something that's non-crypto related because we can't just keep on waiting for the people to come to us we have to come to them at least a little bit so that's why you know i hit out sent out that first tweet uh regarding uh you know it's time for us to step out of our comfort zone well i i got it you you with that litecoin that was very newsworthy there that was that was uh that again, it's it's Litecoin. It's you know, whatever they can do what they want to want to do it. But that that's the way you spread the word. You go you go outside your comfort zone. You just don't go to a crypto event. You go to something where people will be like, "What the heck is this?" And yeah, I I, I had some uh, good marketing on their part. So uh, you know, Bitcoin people could do the same thing with their businesses or whatever they want to do, uh, and, and go to uh, events like that. And you know, and I think Russell was definitely he's definitely trying to reach out to people outside of. Uh, the comfort zone, as you yes. put it. So overall, um, what, would you, what would you rate the, the event that the Bitcoin is? I mean, you're, you're being, uh, giving a pretty honest review of it. I, I am, I'm gonna give you a really honest review. You know, I, got, I saw a couple of people talk about, hey, you know, I went to Bitcoin is, it was good. Uh, I, I, will, I will give you my, my review. I'd probably give it a six or seven out of 10. Um, nothing I'm really looking forward to going to again. Um, it's really going to depend on who attends, but you know, I, I attend other events where, where the same people are there. So, I mean, I'm not too pumped to go to another Bitcoin is right now. Uh, they would really have to convince me, but, uh, let, you know, we're going to have to talk about something else. What I am interested in is in an upcoming event that's happening the week of Halloween in Vegas, uh, world crypto con because what's really interesting is at the exact same time in Las Vegas, Money 2020 is happening. So I want to actually walk into uh, Money 2020 and talk to the, uh, you know, these PayPal people and these regular investors and get their point of view of cryptocurrencies because, it's, you know, like I said, it's time for us to step out of our comfort zone and, you know, I'll bring them into World CryptoCon and they can come ask questions because what's interesting is Money 2020 is running at the same time as World CryptoCon and backed is actually going to be there at World CryptoCon to speak about their uh, platform. So um, I think it's time to ask some questions to the regular folks and talk some questions to these uh, institutions. Worlds collide, people. Pound that like button. I wonder if that's a coincidence that both, I mean, maybe one of them planned to be there and 
was trying to be there when the other one was there. Who knows? Who knows what the situation is? But uh, okay, you'll be in Vegas tonight. Okay, so anything else you want to say? We're we're getting here at the to the end of the show. Uh, every all his links are below his uh, Gaston Cruz's uh, Twitter feed and to the uh, bit. What, what's the name of the? Uh, I got bit active. Bit we're active. a bit active. Bit active. We're a bit active. But yeah, man. Um, one last thing. Um, I am going to be putting up some YouTube videos of the event up on the Bit Active YouTube channel, uh, and I'm going to be giving away a couple ledgers pretty soon to people who uh, uh, comment, like, and leave their social media handle on there. I'll be uh, putting up those details soon on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at the Gaston Cruz. Now, when you're saying video of the event, you mean video of your Long Beach event, video of the Long Beach. I do videos of my Long Beach event, and I'm trying to do a uh, little media videos of the events that I attend. Um, I wanted to get more uh, coverage of Bitcoin is, but they didn't let me talk, so it was a little challenging. Okay, okay, very good. Well, I will link, I will link to the uh, YouTube also. I got to get that from you. All right, dude, thank you very much. It's great that I got you on here finally. We did it, Gaston. Thank you very much. Everybody, check out the links below. I'm Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister, the Disrupt Meister. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like this video, share this video, check out the links, pound that like button, bang that bell button, click on those squares. New show every day. Thank you, Gaston. We will see everyone later. Bye-bye. See ya.